putting us in gear. Ready? Okay, go ahead. Over here. What's that? Sinking. Oh no, oh. Try to save it, I think. Lady Brit's leaving. Lady Brit's going out. I know. Okay. That's why I'm stopping. Again, another Barracuda. All right, Mr. Barracuda, just swam under. What was he, a good two feet? He's a good size. All right, we've caught three Barracuda now and one Jack. We're really kicking it. Yeah, we left Port Louis this morning and we're starting our trip north. And we're up to Karakou now, just at, um, at Turtle Bay, which is always a nice place. Uh, we got in earlier tonight, and we're just here at the anchorage. It's a very mellow place, lots of cruisers. There's about half the balls are, um, are, are balls you can, you can tie up to and, and pay by the night. Um, but it's also easy, to, obviously, to anchor, which is what we've done. And um, yeah, we're gonna have dinner again at the original Slipway restaurant um, over by the marina, and it's a great, that's a great place. Uh, good food, always has a great, a great menu. I, I have to say, after a point, you get tired of the authentic Caribbean uh, food because it's just hamburgers, it's just bar food, you know, and it, and so you don't want that. You want something that's a little bit better, but not crazy expensive. And the original slipway uh, is, it, you know, it, it does that perfectly. It's it's really good. Um, and so yeah, it's good. We're, we're we're from here. We're just making a race up to Antigua. We have to be there in early April for the uh, oyster regatta. And um, we're not going to race. But we're going to be there and drink and eat with uh, other oyster owners. And that's always a good thing. So we did the lead line thing here on the dock and it's um, it's basically high water right now and we are showing exactly, I'm sorry the light's not good enough, it's a little, it's kind of dusk right now, um, but 
we are within inches of being at the depth of our keel and I don't think that's going to work. So we, we are probably going to have to go to the next island for fuel. We still have three quarters of a tank of fuel. It's uh, not the end of the world, but you know, it's just one of those things where we, we, we thought we, at high water we could do it, but but at anything other than high water, we're going to be a little bit no. low. When he says no, say it again. What did we say? No. I say. It's not uh, just no. Uh, ain't happening. Ain't it's no. Hell, it's it's hell, hell, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> so we're at the original slippery restaurant here in Kerku in Turo Bay, and I really like this place. It's 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 a wonderful um, venue because. Mm. They've got the old machinery here, like here's a ginormous bandsaw. Are you video taking my saw? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's it, it's like this this is the power here. It ran off of a belt. And this thing must weigh tons. It is huge. I mean totally solid. And over here they've got a planer, I believe this probably is. Um, and then you know back back in the woods here is the actual original slipway and I, I, I'm just you know with the light with the light being that what it is there's no way to show it but you know the rails are there all the machinery for pulling the boats up is still there I mean it's not operable or anything it's you know it's, it's 50 years old but it is um, it's a really, really neat place, and the food is great, and probably the best food I've found here in Tiro Bay. Um, very, very nice. And they have great food. You have great food. Absolutely great food. Got to get a reservation, though, or you won't get a spot. Paradise Beach Club, final time on our way out to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We're actually already cleared out, and the, we got quite the swell going on here. Um, and um, it's coming all the way up on the beach. It's high water right about now. Go check it out. Talisman front and center. Uh, Allison, the owner, uh, totally hooked us up. And we're psyched about that. It's on there good too. We need a picture of the two of us next to it. Looking for a ball. Mooring ball. I will right, we'll follow you. We got to clear in, so close to customs. Yes. You know. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. Kind of a damp day here. This morning we uh, we sailed over in an absolute torrential downpour, uh, just a, almost monsoon type conditions. Uh, pea soup. We were using the radar and everything um, to get up here to Union Island um, from Karaku, and we we cleared in here in um, in Clifton. The town is called, and it's a little gritty here. I have to say, it's just it's one of those places that's clearly run down and 
nobody's investing any money in it. Uh, but I think it probably got hit, you know, by some storms. Um, but a lot of it's just rot and, and lack of maintenance, trash all over the place. You know, not really a, a very um, well represented town, I don't think. Although, you know, the anchorage is interesting. It's got reefs. You see guys over here on their on their kite. There's a big kite boarding um, deal going on here. Uh, they have boat boat boys here that come out and you know help you get a, a boring ball and you you know you pay them 15 EC or something or 30 EC. I, don't know, I think I paid the guy 30 EC. The thing about ECs is they're pegged at 2.7 to the dollar, so it just seems like everything sounds expensive, but in reality, it's the dollars just aren't the EC currency isn't worth very much. You have to kind of calculate that in and try to do a, a quick mental calculation to the dollar and see what you think is fair. Um, about 60 EC for the ball for overnight and we decided we wanted with all the reefs and everything around we figured it would be best to be on a ball and uh, just just kind of kind of hang for one night and then uh, we're gonna um, head over to uh, Tobago Keys I think tomorrow uh, but this is in the meantime this is what Clifton looks like it's uh, you know unfortunately there's you know, some beach bars and everything over there that were probably wonderful at one time big restaurants um, but it's um, it's just kind of falling apart, and uh, you know it's a circular thing economically. You need you need tourism um, dollars in order to keep things up, upgraded and, 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 and kept looking good, and you don't get tourism dollars if they're not upgraded and looking good. And it can't just be one place; it has to be all the places. And you, you walk through town, and there's just trash and pallets and um, you know dead outboards and, and, and things like that laying around and it just needs a really good cleaning and you, know, you get down here with about four 30 cubic yard dumpsters and have a day but you know the problem is that the people don't care I mean they just don't they, they're it's not even about poverty they just don't care and that's kind of the bummer of it all um, it's kind of you know they just kind of eke out an existence and call that okay um, so yeah it's unfortunate, but it's uh, parts of the Caribbean are that way. So they're, they're doing e-dock here. It's this little archway in, and it's uh, it's pretty crazy when there's a swell. Charles gonna have to duck down. Maybe. Unless he wants to hit his head. The Tobago Keys yeah. in the Grenadines. Really filled with, surrounded by reefs, which is good in a way it breaks the surf down. It also makes it the navigation. It's Union Island back there. Just left this morning. It's Myru. We're not going to go there. Then we'll go up north. Just hanging in Tobago Keys. Um, he wants to go snorkel the reef, which I said I'd go do. And a uh, big catamaran dropped off a ton of people at the beach, and then, but then they picked him back up and left. So we'll get the place to ourselves. Other beach up over there, if you want to get to it, a little bit more of a drive. And lots of kiteboarding because there's a huge reef out there. These are piles of conch shells. Um, that's how many conchs they go through making conch soup and there never seems to be any problem with supply um, and then they put them on the beach like this and the, the, eventually they, they grind down into sand and re, you know basically rehabilitate the beach but it takes a long time like a decade or two lots of charter charter boats here
got Tobago Keys. Beautiful, just get back from snorkeling. Up there on that little point. Gorgeous. It's nice. It's a cool uh, sun sail. Cat next to us and the morning bar. You need to go check out that beach. in the Tobago Keys and it is a truly awesome place it's uh, a marine sanctuary so it's not um, it's not crowded with with uh, lots of businesses although there's a beautiful little restaurant on the that's a kind of a there's four or five different uh, vendors or maybe more that 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 pay for the right to be there and they all share the space and it's really cool um, plus you've got a bunch of boat boys to come out and help you anchor or get tied up on a ball rather you can do either um, but being on a ball is a little bit more money um, but we love it it's fantastic and the water quality is you know off the chart um, no pollution or anything here so more turtles than I could I could I could I mean there were five of them right around next to me and they were big too they were probably three feet across and four feet long um, what else um, definitely worth the trip here there's lots of sun sail and moorings charters around so you know that um, I think they're pro skippered mostly but if you had experience you could probably bear boat um, and you better be good with a chart plotter because there's a lot of reefs and stuff around um, finally um, at our anchor location um, we are very very close to close to land but in deep water we have almost four meters under the keel but the key here and luckily the boat in front of us and the boat behind us have left but in order for me to leave this spot i need to kick the the bow out um, to starboard in order to guarantee that we end up in the middle of the channel and not having to back up in reverse um, without having the two boats in front and back it, it lessens that risk some but it's also something i don't want to do so I'm gonna kind of go through um, with uh, the viewers what it is that I do to, 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 to control this boat um, when I need to be in a certain spot. So we're gonna do that in a minute. So one of my preps is to make sure that the fabric is tucked back in so that we can see the instruments. Um, you really need to be able to see your wind angle indicator and your meters uh, depth under, under keel. Um, because th those two things are very important. So, 
secondly, over here, you'll notice that this is a rudder angle indicator. And it shows which direction the, the, um, the rudder is facing. And it's a huge tool. You need to know you can easily get lost um, as to where uh, the rudder is when you're um, in the heat of battle, as it were. Um, these uh, control heads also have a, um, a rudder angle indicator as well. At least they should. I don't see them. Oh, yeah. there it is. It's up top on. They changed the software. Have have that in you know in the back of your mind that you can always go there. Um, and then finally, Wendy is going to remove the starboard um, mooring line first. We have two mooring lines, a starboard and a port side mooring line. You always want to have two on a mooring ball and they come back to the same side cleat. You don't want to run them from, from the starboard cleat to the, to the port cleat because then the ball will, will literally saw back and forth on the line and eventually chafe through it. Um, what you want is redundancy. You want two, you want two um, mooring lines that if, should one fail, you've got the other one. But by, by having Wendy pull off the starboard one first, it'll pull, it'll, it'll tend to tip the boat more out into the channel. And that's what I'm looking for. And then I, I will probably use rudder kick um, to confirm that this boat is, is, is going off um, the wind off to the starboard side so that I don't end up having to back out. Um, and I'm going to do that by turning the wheel all the way to one side and goosing the throttle up, um, which will, the prop wash will, will run across the surface of the rudder and push the stern of the boat to whatever side the, um, the rudder is not tilted toward, if you can imagine that. So we're trying to spin the boat in place and that's how we do it. It's less effective with a sail drive system, um, but works very, very well with boats that have a direct drive where the propeller is pretty much directly in front of the rudder. Um, so that's one of the tools in the toolkit. We're gonna probably have the bow thruster on, but um, most sailors, captains in particular, view bow thrusters as kind of a cheating type thing. And so you leave it, you know, for the, for, for the, for the point where you absolutely need it. Oh pulling mooring lines out of the water and uh, the bow thruster is down in the water so you really don't want to use the bow thruster because it might suck one of the mooring lines in. There you go. I mean that's that's pro level tip right there because we have one time many many years ago taken a line into our bow thruster and it was a smaller diameter one about 10 mil. Um, these are much bigger but with the power of our bow, bow thruster if we pull one of our mooring lines into that thing um, it will wrap it and have, it'll be virtually impossible to get free. Um, at that point, we're talking about just you know abandoning the whole thing, hopefully if it's not still attached to the ball, um, or dropping an anchor you know, as an emergency to try to make sure that we don't, you know, that we don't go on the rocks. We're that close, we we're so close here. We don't have any opportunities for mistakes. That's why we're doing this video. Okay. Hold on a second. Okay, go ahead. So I'm in neutral now. I don't want to just drive away from the ball. I need her to be able to pull it free. So we're good. Success, just like that. The other side of the passage, a couple of rocks, a couple hundred yards out. Easy enough in perfect weather. want to do this at night. No lights, 